Waited it. Angel Yen is going to try to make a birdie here. She does not agree with Sean's read. She said right to left. Uh, what I do know is the putt's fast. It should actually die a little left. As we showed you, number 70 in the race to the CME Globe. This week and next week, the last chances to punch your ticket to Naples. Uh, <clears throat> Sean is one up in the reading putts <laughs> category. He's seen a few in the years. We're at the 10th, and this is So Yan Yu. Earned her 10th career title on her original tour, the KLPGA, and it was her first major championship back in June. Popular spot. Jarena at 12. This for birdie and could be a skin on this hole. Driver four iron for one of the longest hitters out here. Four hundred yards on the scorecard. About probably playing in the four seventy category, yeah. all <laughs> things considered. Yeah. But Uphill almost a the par five wind. in your heart. <laughs> Absolutely. Back one to the eleventh. Brittany Aldamari on the tee. A little bit awkward with this wind. It's off the right, but there is a bit of a hurt still in it. This one's going a bit left. Yeah, it's going to run off the green there and down into one of the little sl uh, swales. I almost said snail there. <laughs> that may be the pace we're playing with, uh, <laughs> with difficult conditions. Cheyenne Knight. Judy, how about the fact that she came back this year and got herself into a playoff in Scotland? I mean, you never know how a player is going to respond to that first victory, do you? Well, I, all I know is the first victory is such an important one, and it changes everything with how you see yourself um, as a player and how you're... Changes, Judy. I want to point out that Charlie Hull, the leader, shot 68. She teed off at 731 this morning. Yeah. And it had to be in the 30s. It was uh, wind chill in the, the low 30s. And just six rounds under par of the 48 who teed it up in the morning wave. Just a moment ago at the 10th, Nasa Hataoka. Nasa Hataoka is not a very tall player, and she just has the most compact golf swing. It just, um, it just fits her height exactly. 11. This is where Altamara's ball finished up, her second. And not a bad spot there, Tom. Just off that upslope, chipping back into the wind. Yeah, she's done well there. It should be a par for Altamara, and she will continue her good play. Go to the T at the 13th, and we can take a look at our Trackman Tracer technology presented by NEC. Jarena thinks she's going to flirt with those bunkers down the right side. That's a safe line. You see that tree there on the right off the T. There's a couple of bunkers there that the players used to knock it over, but as Morgan Pressel was telling us yesterday, the T's been moved back, so now only the really big hitters can knock it over those bunkers. Cheyenne Knight for birdie at the 10th. Seen a few made from over there. Pop off in Lee six. Coldest weather you played in and commentated in, Judy? The coldest weather I think I played in was um, in Pompano Beach, Florida. At team 11. Tamari for par. I think this is just a formality for her. Oh, that what? was really unusual. 
It really is. Like, she's uh, normally so solid. Yeah. Just... But just those last couple of putts, I think. And, and I have to say, I mean, it, I mean, we talk about the cold weather. Um, if your hands are outside in this cold air, the, your fingers can get very cold very quickly. And you do lose that little bit of, of feel and, and, and sense for the putt sometimes. And there is a sense of urgency to, to really hurry up and hit the putt when you're cold because you, you just want to get on with things. I think she just really didn't set up well to that little putt. Um, she got the ball started towards the left edge of the hole. And if it was going to do anything, it was going to go left. So, um, and a little hurried or um, just a mistake. And then the coldest you ever commentated in. NASA for birdie. Open championship at Muirfield the year that Ernie Els won on that horrific day, which Saturday. I believe was it the second round? Third round. Because Tiger was trying to win the calendar Grand Slam. He had won the Masters in U.S. Uh, Open. Uh, well, I, the oh, day is a blur. <laughs> it was wet. It was cold. It was windy. And... Um, we all survived. You did. And so did Ernie Els. Charlie Hull leads it. There are the six rounds under par. Allie McDonald got married this summer to Charlie Ewing. And uh, she said she thought January of next year she'd go ahead and change the name. Let's go ahead and change it now. And as Brian Carroll, the uh, vice president, senior vice president of the LPGA, said, what better place to go by Ewing for the first time than in Dallas? Well, it garners a lot of attention, at least. Good to see Soyeon back. Jong and Lee Six came back at Pelican, just like Jin Young Ko. Indy Park, twice a champion here. And Jay Marie Green, another one of those players looking for a first victory on the LPGA Tour. She is such a magnificent ball striker. It's just a matter of... Uh, getting the ball in the hole in the right number of strokes because if you watch her hit the golf ball you won't believe she's not one of the top players in the world there's Brittany with a couple of uncharacteristic short misses MJ her has a home here in North Texas area Christy Kerr is creeping up on 20 million dollars in career earnings and she would join Annika and Kari as the only three players to have done that she's less than a hundred thousand away well, she has had a uh, storied career out here since she's 18 years old. And she'll be there next week at the U.S. Women's Open. Past winner. To 12, and Brittany Altamare. This one playing back into the wind. And really, this is about quality of strike, and ideally, uh, trying to keep the ball down just a little bit to try and get any extra inches you can out of the tee shot. This one, a little bit of a fade. Just a moment ago at the 10th, So Yan Yu. Save her par. She told me yesterday she was growing quite um, accustomed to not playing tournament golf. And so she just kind of had to tell herself, it's time to get back. But yeah, I, I would agree with that as we go to 11. Cheyenne Knight on the tee. Yeah, so I think that's, that's going to climb back into the back part of that green and it's going to be a tough putt. It's quite a narrow green there. And she just got the club wrong there. I think it took quite a firm bounce. The greens have been. Uh, soft in places this week. And we'll go to the 13th, the par five, which for the second half of the hole snakes around Lake Louisville. Yep. Definitely has to be. A lot of green here, but uh, you play to very small areas. Mm -hmm. Probably the... Starting at that edge Yes. Have it come down left edge of it? Yes.
Sometimes, Judy, especially in windy conditions, those small areas seem tiny. <laughs> this one, even though it's only 115 yards in a lofted wedge, is still a tiny little target back there, and you cannot go long with the wind helping from the right. I agree. Um, there is a front right and there is a back left here, and neither one is inviting. Thank goodness you have a wedge in your hand. PGA on a two-week run through the Lone Star State, and Charlie Hall leads by one. Just going to be quiet and watch. It's going to be a lot about speed coming back down this green. Pretty darn good. <laughs> Really good. That is excellent. It should walk away with a three, so trying to stay at one under. And Altamare. That was from 156. She was on an upslope, and when you're playing into the wind from an upslope, it's normally less than ideal. Oh. Oh, she can grin now. She's got a chance to get that stroke back, but she just lost at 11. And that's where we head back. Hatooko also has a pretty tough putt here at the 11th. Nasa had that really nice start to the year. One of those players that... Um, was interrupted by the COVID shutdown in terms of her momentum and the way that she was playing when she finished tied for second. Lost in a playoff at the Diamond Resorts uh, Tournament of Champions that Gabby Lopez won, and then she finished second at the Gamebridge LPGA at Boca Rio. I think it was a missed about three yeah. and a half, four footer. Yeah. On that final hole. Three putt. So it came close to, to winning at the beginning of the year. And and then had a long break, didn't play again until the LPGA Tour went to Scotland. And the Aberdeen Standard Investments Lady Scottish Open, where she finished 12. Well, she tried to catch that little slope there and thought it would give it some speed, but the putt was, uh, for the most part, kind of into the wind from that angle. Jarena Pillar with a birdie putt here at the 13th. Uphill and into what grain there is until just at the hole. The hole's just placed on a little side slope, and the grain will take it a little right. Oh, good effort. I apologize for the muffled sound of the face mask, Tom. We're not required to wear them out here, but you need them for warmth. Yeah, I was driving around the golf course earlier, and I left mine on um, because it was a lot warmer. So you on you for birdie. The click of the fingers, it always signifies that, that they want the ball to stop. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> That's right. Not sure why that ever started or if it makes any difference. To 12, world number one, Jin Young Ko. And not a bad spot to chip from, although she is quite below the green surface. Oh my God. Uh. Uh, underneath all those layers and accoutrement, the world number one, 11 again. NASA for par. There's certainly a few players that I would never recognize yeah. in their outfits today. Part bogey for NASA, so she's going to fall back to one over. You know, Tom, I've learned uh, through the mask wearing and through the virus that um, 
you actually can tell when people are sincerely smiling. Does the when mask they have go up? Well, well, no, when they have the, the, the mask on, because it's all about their eyes. Ah. Yeah. Maybe we weren't as specific noticing that um, when a person's whole face is evident. They say that the great actors and actresses of the world, certainly in movies, act with their eyes. Angel Yin for a birdie. So we're all still learning. So it's a good stroke. Angel with a tremendous amount of potential. She certainly uh, has a lot of power, and we've seen that in the Solheim Cup. We'd like to see her break through and win. Also trying to break through Brittany Altamare. She is this one breaking a bit to the right, and that was a good part. Okay, so that's more like the Brittany Altamare that we know. Back and Tracer Technology, presented by NEC. And Tom, I think this is just a long par three for, for this group today and just really got to put it into a decent position for, for your second shot, for a layup. The cold is getting to you. Par five, you meant, Karen. That's the one. It would be a long <laughs> par three, though. But... I think that 10-mile-per-hour wind is uh, not quite accurate. They rounded down most vulnerable. Well, we have three Swedes in the top six, Judy. I mean... And your point is? It's a little chilly, is all I'm saying. <laughs> but then you have Pornarong Patlin from Thailand, so sometimes, you know... Say, I wanted to mention that I was a viewer yesterday afternoon, and those uh, fellas can really play the game. Forget, you know, hockey and baseball. This, yeah. Now this is their game. <laughs> it is. They were very impressive. Harriet Tondegarn and her sister Moria, both uh, recovering from COVID. Talked to those two yesterday. They were playing with Tilly Claggett, who got us an exemption into the event, an amateur, yesterday in a practice round. Off your right now. In off your right. See your shot. To 12. And Soyeon Yu. 